What's going on everybody? My name is Jason. I work at All Out Bikes and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rebuilding these wheels for a vintage 80s GT Aggressor BMX bike and the customer brought in the wheels to ask us how much we would charge to rebuild them and I guess he didn't like the price he ended up taking it back home and started to clean it up himself and you know he did a very thorough job of cleaning these hubs and it's looking great right here problem is with the hubs there was a lot of corrosion that was going on and he ended up using a wire brush to kind of clean it up and you can't really use a wire brush to clean aluminum hubs so unfortunately it's pitted it um, more than it would have if he used uh, a different method so anytime you're cleaning aluminum hubs with some corrosion you want to try to use something kind of light because since this metal is so soft it will leave marks and as you can see with these hubs these hubs are kind of pitted and it you would have seen some of the pitting even if you cleaned it up using the best method so the this is a survivor this is not going to be museum quality uh, this is just going to be a very nice survivor and you know what after we're done with this it's going to look great okay because he did do a very good job cleaning it he just needed to clean it a little bit less the only problem the only real problem that we've got is he cut the spokes out of the wheels before removing the free will and the problem with that is now there's nothing to really grab onto so I, it's not like I can put this into a vise because one it's going to damage the hub further there's still a decal on here and I don't want that damaged anymore and there's no real good way so what we've got here is I'm going to enlist the help of our new intern Zeke over there and what we're going to do is we're going to use an impact wrench this is a very strong impact wrench and I'm hoping that the moment we start to use it that it's going to have enough oomph that it's going to break the free will free because other I mean, if it doesn't the problem is if this hub starts turning in my hands the chrome that's flaking off of this is going to shred my hands so this is either going to be something really good where it's going to break free or it's going to be something that's going to go viral because <laughs> it's going to be bike shop worker loses hands trying to rebuild hubs so we're going to see let's uh, go ahead and see about breaking this free wool free so I can measure the spokes and get these built up today and give the customer a call I'm going to attempt to hold it using this blue towel. We're going to put the tool on. And then you're going to need to stand up. There's the tool right there. Is that going? It's going, yeah. And don't don't go full Monty with it. Yeah, uh, just lightly. Let's do light first, and then go from there. Go. Okay. Yep. No, it's spinning. Oh, I can feel it. It's just spinning. Okay, go a little bit more. Ow! Now this is some uh, welding stuff. Um, let's try this again. I'm trying to avoid the gear because as it's going backwards, I think it'll kind of shred. Okay, and I've wrapped this where it, hopefully it'll tighten up some if it's spinning. So go go for it. Go. Oh Nothing's man! At all. That is on there tight. You have like sticky tape you could put on it, maybe. Well, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a lot tighter. Okay. 
can't you just put the spokes in the room together and then take it off? Gear is in the way. Okay. <laughs> Don't hold it. Yeah. Go. <laughs> oh, saw the sparks. Let's try to be careful there. Hold it, hold it. Oh, man. Okay, um... Huh. Let's put some oil on here. Penetrating oil. Five hours later. Alright. So we got some new gloves. I don't have my microphone on, I'm sorry. Okay. It's been soaking for several hours. And I've got new gloves. So. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay. Go. Ready? Yep. Wait. This is hurting. Okay. Keep pressure. Tight. Go. Go. Hit it. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Oh, man, that hurts. Are you all right? Yeah. Um, let me see. Here, let me. Yay! About time. Got it. Now that we got the free will off of this hub, what we've got is we've got a couple things. One, you want to get a piece of paper, pencil. Um, you need a way of measuring the inside diameter of the rim. I actually have the Wheelsmith spoke length system right here. And this is uh, very handy. Uh, however, uh, my calculator that I, that came with it, every time it runs out of batteries, the uh, it has to be sent in to be recalibrated. So in this case, I'll be using the internet for uh, my final um, calculations. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to get this hub. I'm going to turn to a page in here where I can figure out the center to flange measurement. So I'm going to simply put this on to this and I'm going to center the hub. I'm going to do that by centering. I'm going to be lining up the ends of the lock nuts and this one's going to be a C. There's letters on here. And then the flange is center to flange is going to be 28 millimeters. Both sides are going to be 28. So I'm going to be doing center to flange 28 millimeters. You got to write this stuff down. All right. Then I'm going to measure the distance from here, from hole to hole, is what we're going to be doing. Let me make sure, make sure you, whenever you turn this on, that you zero it out, so you're getting an accurate reading. And I'm going to be, I'm going to say that that center hole to center hole is 56.6 millimeters. And that's going to be a um, flange hole to hole. Okay, that's the that's going to be for the rear hub. The 
front hub, I have a feeling it's going to be a 60 uh, or 56 as well, and it is. So, I'll turn this off. I'm going to check this. And I'm going to line this up, which it does not does not register on here, but I'm going to line it up as best as I can to the center of the hub, and then I'm going to look. It looks like we are at 34, yep, 34 millimeters. So the front one, center to flange, is uh, 34 millimeters. And the flange is going to be 56.6. All right. Next step. Is going to be measuring. Let's not let that drop. We're going to figure out the inner diameter here. I'm going to try to line it up as best I can, give this a spin, make sure it's doing good. Yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're going, going to measure. We're going to measure the distance that it overlaps right here in millimeters. But just to make sure that the rim is, we want to make sure that the measurement is accurate because if uh, the rim is slightly out around, then that measurement I just did is going to be a little off. So we're going to check this one. And if it measures up to 306, then that's fine. If it measures 308, then we want to split the difference and say 307. Overlapping. This is measuring 305. So we're going to do 305.5. Now we want to we want to subtract or we want to subtract 305.5 from 700, which is going to be 394.5. Okay. So uh, Now I need to get my tablet so I can look up those measurements. All right, so what I like to use is I like to use the United Bicycle Institute spoke calculator. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put in the effective rim diameter, which is going to be uh, 394 0.5. The hub flange diameter, let's uh, do the rear one. We're going to do the 56.6. And then we're going to do the center hub flange, the center. We're going to go 28. We're going to go 36 hole, and we're going to go 3 cross, so we're going to calculate. Okay, so with the 3 cross, it's a 185.6. We're going to change it to a 4 cross, because I'm not sure if this one is a 4 cross or not. 
So we've got a 195.1 with a 4 across. Okay, so now with the front, we're going to go center to flange, 34. Thirty-four center to flange, and with a four cross, and that's going to be a one ninety-six with a four cross, and then we're going to change it to a three cross. Calculate, and it's one eighty-six point six for a three cross. Okay, so on the rear. For a three cross, it needs to be a 185.6. Uh, for the front, it needs to be a 186.6. So if we use a 186, I mean, we can use a 186 on either one for a three cross. For a four cross, we should be able to use a 196 for a four cross because they're close enough. All right, now that we've got that figured out, let's find the spokes and let's get to building. Now that we've got the spokes figured out, we're going to go ahead and get this uh, built up so that we can give the customer a call and let him know that his wheels are finally done. That free will was stuck. because we couldn't find any longer spokes to go with the four cross. The four cross on this wheel required 196 millimeters, whereas the three cross we had 186. So it'll, uh, it, it will work just fine. It's not ideal. I really wanted to go with a four cross, but we're working with what we can get. Now the really cool thing about these hubs is the fact that going with the spokes on the outside here it actually adds quite a bit of stiffness to the wheels. If we were using pegs on this bike you could put these spokes run them on the inside so that the spokes don't make contact with uh, the ledges and brick and such. As you can see a traditional hub the spokes actually cross each other, one on the outside, one on the inside. This is the way a traditional hub looks, and this is what's unique. All of these spokes are on the outside, and to accomplish this, the holes in the hub actually stagger from the outside of the flange to the inside of the flange to allow this spoke to get past this one here. Well, these wheels turned out great. The only way they could have come out better is if we had longer spokes and we would have been able to go with a four cross versus the three cross that we were forced to do. Uh, but the wheels are straight and they're round. They turned out great. I believe the customer is going to be happy. So if you enjoyed this video, 
please consider subscribing to the channel because it really helps us out. Uh, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and check out some of the other videos on the corner of the screen, and I'll see you later. Thanks.